When we first start, started talking about quantum mechanics, we started with some model systems like particle in a box and rigid rotator and so on, and then we worked our way up to the hydrogen atom. Going on further from that, for the helium atom, we found that the Schrodinger equation could not be solved exactly for the helium atom or for any other system which contained more than one electron. Well, now we're going to talk not about atoms but molecules and we're going to apply mo uh, quantum mechanics to describe bonding in molecules. But before we do that, just let's see what we know already about bonding in molecules. In particular, we could ask the question, what is a chemical bond? One of the first things that may come to mind based on your previous study of chemistry is that a bond in a molecule is buildup of electron density between the atoms. Well, let's take a look at that. Let's say we have, say, a hydrogen atom here, and we'll note, denote the electron distribution by a circle, the 1s, for example, and here we have a hydrogen atom here. As these hydrogen atoms come closer together, what happens? Well, you form a bond where here's the nucleus and here's the nucleus, and then you have some sort of bond like this, and this is called, uh, this would then be the buildup of electron density. Well, that's a useful concept. However, if we actually look at electron density throughout a molecule, we find that actually the bond represents a dip. Usually it represents a dip in electron density. For example, let's look at the oxygen molecule. Here's one oxygen, here's another and they're close enough together so that there's a chemical bond between them. And now let's look at electron density as we go from one side to the other. We'll plot here electron density, which perhaps we could in quantum mechanics call that the square of the wave function of the molecule, but just for now let's call it electron density uh, versus distance here r. Well it turns out that only the valence electrons, remember from introductory chemistry, only the valence electrons are involved in bonding. In this case there would be, for instance, say 2p orbitals involved in bonding. But the 1s and the 2s, in fact, are still centered or localized on the oxygen atom. So the electron density actually is very large at the uh, center where the where the atoms are located and since this is only electrons involved in bonding the electron density in between the two atoms would be small so if we plot electron density there's the position of that oxygen atom there's a position of that oxygen atom so you come up go here be a, a maximum and then we have that dip there and it goes up here and then a maximum falls out. So from this picture it appears like for diatomic molecules greater than hydrogen we would have a minimum in electron density. Electron density sure builds up between them but if you look at total electron density it would actually be a dip, a little valley in between these two mountain peaks representing the core electrons in the atoms forming the molecule. Perhaps that's a good description, uh, electron density build up, but we have to remember that most of the electron density will be centered around the atoms. In fact, that's how X-ray diffraction works. X-rays are diffracted by atoms, or sorry, by electrons, and the electrons are concentrated around the nucleus, so the X-ray diffraction gives you um, where the nuclei are. How about interaction of atomic orbitals? Well, that's something that we perhaps learned in previous course in chemistry. And well again we just drew this but just let's draw it again. Here's the hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom here and a hydrogen atom here and we have 1s, 1s. This say the 1s, one electron and a hydrogen atom in the 1s, one electron the 1s of this hydrogen atom. And as the bond forms we have an overlap of the 1s orbitals. Here's a hydrogen nucleus here, nucleus here. So you might say this is an overlap of atomic orbitals. Interaction of atomic orbitals or interaction of orbitals gives you a bond. Yeah, maybe that's a good description of chemical bonding. And now let's uh, look at another one. Attraction between two atoms. Yeah, well perhaps if we look at 
oh, say, ionic bonding. So we have an ionic bonding. In that case, remember from introductory chemistry, let's look at sodium chloride. Sodium chloride can be thought of as a sodium ion. So the electron is transferred in this bond from the sodium atom to the chloride, leaving sodium with a positive charge and chlorine with a negative charge. So here you have electrostatic attraction between the positive charge and the negative charge. Opposite charges attract and therefore this is an ionic bond. All right, well, let's see what Wikipedia has to say what a chemical bond is. So here's the Wikipedia article on chemical bond. A chemical bond is an attraction between atoms that allows formation of chemical substances to contain two or more atoms. Okay, attraction between two atoms. Now well, that sounds pretty good. The bond is caused by the electrostatic force of attraction between opposite charges, either between the electrons and the nuclei, or as a result of dipole attraction and so on, strong bonds, weak bonds, dipole, dipole, and so on. So it looks like this is a general law uh, description of a chemical bond, but we're just interested here, and I guess in the Wikipedia vernacular, this will be strong bonds, the covalent or ionic. So chemical bond, attraction between two atoms, duh, allows the formation, uh, okay. The bond is caused by electrostatic force of attraction between opposite charges. Well, what do they mean by that? Well, let's take a gander down here. Uh, since opposite charges attract, yeah, oh, that's true, and so on. Electron position between two nuclei will be attracted to both of them. Oh yeah, okay, if it says so. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So I really don't like this uh, this description here. It doesn't really say much. Uh, oh, here they're introducing quantum mechanics due to the matter wave nature of electrons. They must occupy much larger volume and keeps the nuclei apart, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, this is just uh, not really clear and, and junk and so on. So, yeah, Wikipedia is useful sometimes and sometimes it's not. And I don't think it's very useful. So we'll ignore Wikipedia for now. All right, so let's uh, talk about chemical bonds, and this is what we're going to do in the next series of lectures. There are essentially four theories of chemical bonding that chemists use. The first one is uh, the venerable Lewis dot structures. That's something perhaps you learned in secondary school, where the model here is that you have electrons that are represented by particles, and you put dots on them and so on. We'll talk something about that. The next most complex theory of bonding is the valence bond theory, and that would be interaction of atomic orbitals and so on. And then as an adjunct to valence bond theory, there's hybridization, which we'll learn about. And then finally, the most sophisticated theory of bonding is molecular orbital theory, where you actually solve the Schrodinger equation for the entire molecule. So there, a brief introduction to bonding in molecules. Our next topic will be Lewis dot structures.